Live from the San Jose Convention Center, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Hadoop Summit 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Hortonworks. And by EMC, Pivotal, IBM, Pentaho, Teradata, SyncSort, and by Attunity. Now your hosts, John Furrier and George Gilbert. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Silicon Valley in San Jose Convention Center for Hadoop Summit 2015. I'm John Furrier. My co-host George, George Gilbert with Big Data Analyst at Wikibon.com. And uh, this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal and noise. We have two special guests here, uh, the founder and CEO, Praveen Kankaria, and uh, Anand Venegobal. Yeah, Did you get that? Got, you got it. All right, good. So uh, you guys, uh, head of stream analytics, um, the CEO here. Guys, uh, first, before we get into what you guys do, what's your vibe of the show here? You guys are seeing everything out on the floor. You're talking to folks. We're doing our best to share the data here on theCUBE all day, yesterday, today. What, what is, what's the vibe? What's going on? I mean, consolidation? Not happening. Maybe it's some consolidation, but there's people packed house here, bigger names, enterprise focus. What's your vibe? What's your, what's your take on the show? Share to the audience. What's going on here so on I'm, the ground? I'm not, I'm not so worried about the vendor community, what kind of consolidation is happening or not. Uh, I'm more fixated on the customers and the enterprise customers who are walking around here while we are talking here. Uh, I'm seeing a very different vibe this year. Uh, people are onto real use cases. People are not demystifying what big data is. It's not a small POC. Somebody should de-risk the company and figure this big data thing out and go in one corner, take half a million dollars and figure this thing out do a no use, throw away, discardable POC and come back and just say that we can do it when we want to. We are way beyond that. We have real customers, real large enterprises walking around here who have, who are solving real use cases and creating transformational benefits. Anna, what are you so, seeing? Same thing? Uh, yeah, reality. Yeah. And real money. People reality. see the value. The ROI exactly. thing is like, hey, you know what? Yeah. Our ROI is if we don't start doing something, right. there's no ROI at all, yeah. right? Exactly. So, you know, I just want to harp on one uh, thing that Praveen said. That's, it's real now. It's real now. The, yeah. the biggest companies in the world are spending real money, seeing real value, and hence buying. Are you seeing commonality between, or, or even like categories of applications that are taking off? There's, there's a bit of there's a bit of a bias in what I'm saying, but I'm I'm hearing streaming a lot, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, well, well real time drives that. Yeah, I mean, real time. That, that's right? not. I mean, yeah, bias right? in the sense it's, that it streaming is, helps it is, you guys. It is a fact, right? People are uh, are really really enthusiastic about adding uh, a rich customer experience, creating a rich customer experience by adding the most recent information and. Blending all of that. It's interesting you said that because you know, even though you you, you claim to be biased because that's an interest you guys have, you kind of look what you want to see. But one of the things I do in the cube every every event is I kind of have a mental model of if I was going to do a tag cloud in my head of what I hear the most, and or top three conversations I'm in, you know, real time is probably what I hear the most. Yeah. Okay. Besides Hadoop, I mean Hadoop obviously would be the big fat font. But real time is huge, and yes. that affects a lot of different things: the database, the in memory. Streaming, geo, exactly. this is fast data, it's certainly data flying around, and harnessing it is, is challenging because it's a whole new paradigm shift. So I would agree with you on that. Um, let's take a step back, tell us about Impetus, the company, speeds and feeds, employees, where you guys located, what's, this, what's the company about, then we can dig in some questions. So we are a products and services company, largely focused on big data, and as part of that we do we help large enterprises uh, deliver the promise of big data uh, by way of services. And along the way, we have introduced products where we've seen massive gaps. And the combination is actually turning into, uh, into a very explosive benefit for our customers. So we go in there and we, s we don't get out till the problem is solved. Now whether our product Anand Venugopal here represents stream analytics, whether stream analytics will create a head start, and in some cases not. Uh, it's just a data at rest problem, but needs to be solved with some 
smart algorithms crafted by our uh, data scientists or just smart data engineering, but you know, we don't leave till the problem is not solved. And customers want that right now. It's service is heavy right now because it is cross the chasm. Some say yeah. the early adopters in the industry is cross, but that bridge to the future still is going to bring on the fast followers and the rest of the industry. So, when I, you know, even Gartner says some good numbers, 50% of the people will look at Hadoop. That's still a massive number. That's everyone going to cross over the chasm. So it's not necessarily the enterprise themselves hasn't literally crossed over the chasm. So it's services heavy. So I would agree. But I got to ask you, what specifically on the services do you see the most of that will get the product market booming? Because at the end of the day, the customers are building their products. They have a chasm to cross themselves. So the first thing is Anand mentioned from his bias perspective, real-time streaming analytics is a big area of operation for us. Uh, that's where customers have burning use cases and we're able to go, go in with our tool set and smart people and we're able to solve, create proof of value in a very short amount of time. You know, one voice over IP company called us and I'll give you half an hour this thing is really good, can you really solve this problem without writing a line of code? And we, went, we were able to do this. Ranging to very large use cases where you know people are looking at offloading the traditional data warehouse because that's choking. The price points are not feasible, not viable for them to scale further. Uh, I got to ask a question that's going to lead into how you guys relate to the big data space and Hadoop, kind of as a setup to that. And it's kind of a trick question, so you know, Take it for what it's worth. Analytics, a process or a product? And from a customer standpoint. Process. It's a means to an end. Yeah. The end is not analytics. So, next step is, well, it, to me, you can, you can argue both sides, but process improvement right now seems to be another, not on the tag cloud in terms of most buzzword, but what I'm reading out of the, in, the trends is, everyone's transforming their businesses end to end, right? So like big data impacts every part of the business. Because you you're, you're measuring everything. So if you can instrument something, you can improve it. That's the thesis. Exactly. If you believe that, then the question is, okay, people are going to scratch their heads and say, oh boy, I can really make a difference. So the process changeover is across the board. So I see analytics first addressing process, and then product develops out of that outcomes and whatnot. So, what are you guys seeing in that transformation and how are you guys working with customers? Because they need a trusted partner. Right. right? They got to have a tech person, they got to have a team, and it's a full-on engagement. Yeah. So I, I disagree with uh, calling it just for the sake of uh, process improvement. It's about improving anything and everything. Because if you can gather data on anything and everything and analyze the data, you can improve. So we have customers, hardware companies, who are improving their products because earlier they were not able to analyze all the data they were gathering. The data was sitting in some cold storage. Now they're able to analyze and get the analysis to their engineers who can improve the products in the very next release cycle. So in other words, you could improve a, a product or a process that you, you can, can improve a product or process. It. So, so, so what I'm trying to yeah, yeah. say is uh, yeah. I, I agree with you and yet I disagree that it's much larger than just process improvement agree, or yeah. product improvement. It's about product. I process. guess I agree or disagree with myself, but no, 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 but, no but that's the point. This is the beauty and of people. people. This is the beauty thing about big data. <clears throat> beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yes. If I'm have a problem, I call my problem. I call it what it is. I don't say, oh, I need MapReduce, or I need <laughs> streaming. Yeah. I just got to go in and figure out how to architect that. So I got to, you know, either I have staff on that, that on staff people on staff that can do that, or I got to find a partner. That's why I'm focusing on the services piece, because at the end of the day, who are you calling? What, if I'm a customer, who do you call to do that, right? It's like, okay, so that's kind of what my next question. So take me through an example. I'm a customer, I say, hey, I just had a big board meeting blowout with my team. We had a debate about process and product. We got 10 different opinions on what to do. We all know we got to go to the next generation. Right, come in and help me. What do you? What, what do you say to that? Yeah, sure, I'll be right over, or whiteboarding. Take us through the engagement process with you guys and customer. Take us through that, that, uh, that historical journey there. Sure. <clears throat> the beauty of Impetus offerings is that no matter where the customer is in their evolution cycle, we have an offering to start them where they are and take them all the way through the journey of realizing business value. So with a, with a major airline, we're doing use case discovery right now. You're doing use case, use case discovery, right? 
where are the opportunities for them to improve customer experience or revenue or shape cost off, right? And prioritizing them. That's um, a pretty unusual That's, way to get into a customer where they're like, help us figure out what problem we should solve. That's like trusted advisor territory. Exactly right. That is that is the territory we've been playing in since about nearly two decades now. We have been trusted partner to our customers and it is the journey is continuing in the realm of big data. And you might be surprised, but that is true. They, they actually want help in, when you bring wisdom across industry verticals, People want to hear about not just their industry vertical, but what's you know a, tel a telco guy wants to know what the healthcare industry is doing and how how can they take their lessons from there over here. That's what we do. We help people cross learn from across the ecosystem. Yeah, and some of these are horizontal best practices that can be applied to. Well, there's best practices. There's customers want to partner. It's going to help them figure things out. Exactly. Because a lot of things are happening in real time. Look at Spark, for instance. Next next week, we're going to see a lot of tsunami of activity on Spark. Yeah. And then uh, people will be speculating. Customers will be getting seeing all this greatness and like, hey, I want that that too. Right. And it's not like Spark's not a shiny new toy. It's relevant, right? So right. we see that we can see that you can now see. Okay, I can get that. But now operationalizing Spark. It's a whole different like, ballgame. But John, John, that comes much later. The first problem is, what is the use case I'm going to solve? So then I'm going to solve through Storm, or Spark, or some proprietary platform. That's very secondary. I, I think if you go talk to enterprise customers, uh, and, and the, particularly the executives who have to go into that board meeting and justify where they are, and how, how are we differentiating compared to our competitors, they have to, they, they're not dealing at a Spark or Storm Yeah, or they don't talk that language. Whatever. They, they're dealing at, you know, what problem can I solve? Yes, how fast yes. can I solve? Uh, and and yeah. how much of a benefit can I produce? So, that's why I agree. I think that's why it's challenging when customers come to these early adopter in industry movements like Hadoop, for instance, which has been great. The, the linguistics are not connecting. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like the language of the customer is, hey, I might get fired, or this is the psychology <laughs> of the customer. I might get fired, or if I'm successful, it might fail by, growing too fast and now I have more costs that get bloated out now for, okay, now I'll take that success because the board says, double down. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so have, these are the challenges, an architectural challenge, if you will. And right. we have seen behavior changing in customers based on business priority, right? They become less attached, like just like Praveen said, they become less attached to the technology. You know, we have seen uh, across the distros, there's, there's, you know, there's obviously uh, polarity, right? And, and in, even in the customers, right? Some one distro supports Spark, another distro supports more of Storm. And there are customers who now, we, we are putting a call center analytics case in front of the customer and saying, hey, we solved this problem. Here's a sample of the screenshot. And the customer, no matter what distro they have, is like, I want that. I want because I have that problem. Who are you coming in? When you come in with these, you know, business solution, like case studies, who are you calling on? And then, you know, then who do they introduce you to to say, go now work with them? A very good question. So we're seeing multiple models. Uh, we're seeing some very large, and I'm talking of very large enterprises, Fortune 50, uh, as an example. You go in, and in some companies, the, the business leaders are driving this whole process. Uh, we had one studio called us, this executive called us that, and said, we're releasing a new movie. And, and we don't have our analytics in place. So somebody told me you guys work on Hadoop. <laughs> on what? Hadoop? Hadoop. <laughs> 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 but but, but the, the guy was looking for his problem to be solved. Now, he doesn't care whether it's Hadoop, no SQL data, you know, whatever you bring to bear. But Hadoop connected it for him. He sees the buzz somebody, for Hadoop. Somebody told him yeah. that yeah, this these guys are pros, call them, they know that Hadoop stuff. Can you here. get us some Hadoop? <laughs> but then, but what was the step you said to him, okay, we can you know, help you figure out like the demographics and you know, who's receptive yeah. to the movie. Yeah. Then what is the step from there? Who does he connect you with you know, to actually go do it? So, so, so they have people who are one or more levels below who are more hands-on at a business level. But is it traditional IT or is and, it and, and like and, a rogue And then IT, IT comes in. IT definitely comes in. So, so where I was going was that Business leaders take 
start driving the process and then bring in IT. But we're also seeing another very interesting model, which actually is very heartening, and, and I think it spells very good for such companies. IT leaders are calling us, hey guys, we need you to come in as a partner and help us ferret out use cases and sell these the solutions for these use cases to business so that they can give us more funds. And so that they don't lose relevance. They don't lose right. relevance. So they're out selling to business, so the, which, the, which is very heartening. The, the yeah, you just want to sell that through because they're champions. I mean, this is great, and right. I love this about early adopter markets where its growth is fast. <laughs> the stakeholders who are your champions know what to do. Then they got to kind of herd the cats internally yes. to kind of get it in sold. And they're going to have questions. Wait a minute, we have an Oracle system that does that. Why would we want to you know, move off a relational database to handle this unstructured data? There's no value that's been proven out of that yet. Prove the value, then we'll approve well, So there's always that circular hole you exactly. dig deeper and deeper of the no ops who say no, no, no yeah. uh, to everything. So it, that's the first step you're saying. So get the use case identified, sell it through, then what? Make what the first next? use case a success. Yeah. And in a, in, a, in a major credit card company, that's what happened in early 2012. In three and a half months, we took their first use case, which was a real-time offers and recommendations engine, into production, and I have the date, it's June 12, 2012, and then we went live. And it was a three and a half month uh, assignment, and they were dramatically surprised. It was a 51 node Hadoop cluster, and uh, after that success story, we've now gone on to implement, what, 20 or 30 different use cases successfully in production. Over 3,000 use cases. For that same customer. Same customer, same customer. and the cluster is now over 2,000 nodes. So I got to ask the, the CEO question, Praveen, to you, as, and, and, and to come in and, and share with us the top three conversations that you have, that you're having with customers, <coughs> and what specific large enterprises, not small, large enterprises, um, that, uh, and, and why are they why are they going? And what, are, and what is their top concern? So, top three conversations you're constantly having. If there's a pattern, you can identify. And then, like the top the top enterprises, what's what are their what, what's their their mindset? What are they working on? So, one is uh, you know a lot of customers are dealing with pure data engineering problems. It's not even analytics. Uh, they're drowning in the amount of data. So they just need a better database, a data infrastructure to deal with all the new data that's coming in, and they, everybody knows. Is it the so amount or the fact that they can't sort of <coughs> make sense of it, the catalog, catalog it almost? So, so dealing with data is you know getting the data, ingesting the data, cataloging yeah, it. Yeah, data management. Sure that's not a Hadoop issue. It's just like they can go find it when they need to X years from now. Yeah. yeah. So, so this is one area. Uh, the second area where people did not just come up looking for a solution, but as soon as you show light on this, is this area of real-time analytics. Yeah. And, and we just- And that's something that they haven't seen before, we, right? Every it's a other very Steve day, Jobs-like kind of mindset. Hey, they, have, they don't know what they want yet because they, they haven't they, seen it. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and we're actually, we're surprised by what we're learning on a daily basis. Every new prospect conversation is teaching us a new application, a new use case. Oh wow, we had not thought of this. And this, this morning, Anand actually gave a talk on a topic which was given to us by a customer that they used our streaming analytics platform as, an, as a big data enterprise services bus. They actually coined it for us. That's nice. And, and he went and spoke and he had 150 people in the room. Yeah. And, uh, it's great when customers do your marketing for absolutely. you. It's fantastic because you're so successful. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about the streaming services and the data warehouse modernization. Because that is a, is a trend. Streaming's been out for a while, we're seeing it in real time, but now we're also hearing here, you know, offload, moving off, migrating out of data warehouses, because there's now coexistence between large data warehouses and then the new needs for, I'm seeing new use cases that I've never seen before, whether it's Internet of Things and or other different, what was considered weird use cases now going mainstream. So talk about the streaming and the data warehouse modernization. Talk about both? Yeah, talk about both. We've got a couple there, minutes um, left. There's obviously, a relationship between the two, and I'll draw that line, right? So, it, it all started with the adoption of Hadoop. It's great, people have become open to adopting open source, and now, they're looking for a streaming technology that's compatible with Hadoop, right? And um, the, the Kafka, Storm, or Spark, Stack, each, each either of those are designed to sit conveniently on Hadoop, on any distribution, and 
we're currently based on Kafka Storm, moving to Spark Streaming, adding, adding Spark Streaming support as well. So it's a powerful stack, and we are able to actually overcome conversations with uh, where there's a, the, the competing technology is proprietary in nature. People have become so friendly to open source, and they've been waiting to get liberated by from proprietary the hold of proprietary vendors that they they will they're positively biased towards open source oriented technologies, right? So we are a streaming analytics platform based on open source, but we've solved the problem of deep skill sets and complexity that people need. We make it drop dead easy, visual, to, to put together applications to the point where in a month we were able to produce 12 different screens and, and use case scenarios in a month for a, for a major telco. And the, the beauty of what we produce and the functionality of what we produce rocketed it up all the way to the corporate CIO in terms of the presentation, right? So that was that's that's streaming analytics. Dramatic productivity uh, to to achieve real customer value. Can you give us a quick sort of that's recap of the use case that required both the big data, you know, the data warehouse and the streaming? Yeah. So where you know where they came together? Uh, sure. Um, in this case, we're we're talking about use cases that essentially needed um, streaming sources like a set top box data coming through. And and you're um, you're you're taking the set-top box data, you're matching the customer ID uh, on the box to who the customer is, checking whether that customer actually, for example, opened up a maintenance ticket or not. So when you call in, John calls in, the call center agent already knows that oh this is John. He's probably a pretty frustrated guy right now because his set-top box has been misbehaving. Yeah. And the first thing the agent tells you is that, don't worry, John, if you're calling about the set-top box issue, we already figured that out. We have a we have a replacement job on the way Wednesday morning. So the streaming the data, stuff, The data quality is real time, so it's not stale data. Oh, he called two months ago to complain exactly, yeah. or about his bill. Exactly. It's actually, no, no, it's I get other data sets in, unified in to that moment of the touch interaction. Right. Or engagement so or So you're able to now blend real-time data with the historical data and provide context sensitive service to the customer. That supports your systems of intelligence uh, thesis yeah. that we're working on. Yeah. Okay, we're getting the hook here, but I want to give Praveen the last word. So, what's your next move? What's you got, what are you guys up to? Um, website, how do we con how do people folks contact you guys? What's next in the company mission? Uh, what's, what's going on with, with the so next for steps? For us, I think you know, we see delivering the promise of big data as an opportunity of a lifetime for us as a company. Uh, we're investing in products and services, and the proof is our customers, large Fortune 50 companies, willing to work with us. We are not a Fortune 500 or 1,000 yeah. or Not 2, a reseller companies. of our, yeah, you're guys and, and, and tier yet, one. Yet these large companies are very comfortable in working with us, and, and it's solely because of the value we can bring. Uh, one other uh, trend which has taken hold in the last five, seven years is uh, Information technology has gone on the revenue side of Fortune 500. Prior to that, it was largely seen as a cost center. Yeah. 70% of your IT cost a, is to IT, operate IT, your business. And I, IT was a cost center. Yeah. And, and now IT is on the revenue side as well. And, and that's where, and so IT has become an area to differentiate. The company. Is it any a particular department? Has a is it like marketing first or? We're or? seeing this in marketing first, but I think we're seeing it all across. Uh, Anand mentioned this credit card company, which actually uh, I'll, I'll share a story. Another financial services company. Uh, they had a massive rule-based system for fraud detection, and we actually helped them build a new system, which is based on supervised machine learning. So they could discard all the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rules they'd built, which were not relevant for anybody and everybody, uh, to a fully supervised machine learning based system where the system is constantly learning from their own data and they have cut down false positives tremendously. The system paid for itself in four months. Okay, Praveen, we got to get in the wrap here. Thanks so much for sharing your insights. Congratulations on Thank your you success. Josh. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. We are live at Hadoop Summit here for three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage of theCUBE. I'm John Furrier with George Gilbert. We'll be right back with more coverage right after this short break. <laughs>